One of the most common questions we get around here, especially when a new graphics card launches is, hey, Linus, or hey, Keys. Oh, you shouldn't ask him though. Actually, actually, he helped write this script, so maybe, maybe he knows more than you guys think. How much graphics memory do I need? Well, that is a very good question. I mean, Nvidia and AMD just launched new versions of their top tier graphics cards with eight gigs on the AMD side on board, like eight gigs of RAM. So who are those actually for? Why would one need double the amount of VRAM that was previously offered? We'll have the answer for you right after these messages. Club 3D's MST Hub can run three monitors off one display port. No daisy chaining required. Click now to learn more. Before we go any further with this topic, I guess let's start at the beginning. What the heck is VRAM? Well, it's a specialized version of dynamic random access memory, or DRAM. Similar to the way your normal system RAM keeps the CPU fed with data, the VRAM keeps your GPU, or your graphics processing unit, fed with the information it needs to render images to your monitors. The VRAM holds textures, the frame buffer, um, any other assets that are required to render a frame, like shadow maps, bump maps and lighting information because it's much faster for the GPU to pull off of that extremely high speed memory right next to it than to pull from your hard drive or SSD or even from your system memory. So then what factors influence the amount of VRAM that's used by your GPU? Well, one is monitor resolution. That's because the frame buffer is used to store the image as it's rendered before and during the time it's being sent to the display. The resolution impacts this directly. So games are all rendered at 32-bit color depth, unless you've specifically set them to something else. So that's 32 bits per pixel times 1920 times 1080 for 1080p. So a single frame would be 8.3 megabytes. A 4K image would be a whopping 3840 by 2160 by 32, which is about 33.2 megabytes. Quite a lot more. The second factor that affects memory usage is anti-aliasing. Basically, in order to anti-alias an image or smooth out the jaggies, more pixels need to be rendered and then smoothed to reduce that staircase appearance. As you increase the sample size, so as you take more and more samples, this can have a massive impact on memory usage. Okay, so now you know that resolution and anti-aliasing are two major factors that affect VRAM usage, but what are the numbers? Tell me what I need exactly, Linus. Well, here's the tricky thing. It depends completely on your game, foo. Well, the game you're running, and you're not a fool. You're a very, very intelligent human being. You don't mean to insult you. Obviously, running Minecraft at 4K is going to have very different requirements from something like Skyrim with the high quality texture packs because the actual quality, the resolution of the textures themselves within the game has a huge impact on how much VRAM is going to be used. So here's a bit of an example. When the GTX 680 came out, it only had two gigs of video memory and that was plenty. But as games have gotten more and more detailed, more VRAM has become required to hold higher quality texture. So games that aren't optimized correctly or just are able to render higher quality images are going to fill up a larger VRAM. So that's why something like the GTX 770, which is actually based on the same GPU as the 680, is available with a three gig frame buffer, even though that GPU is not more powerful because the way that the games were being developed had just changed even in that short period of time. Now, there are a couple of mini myths about VRAM that we should probably address as part of this video. First, lots of users think that Crossfire or SLI will actually scale the amount of VRAM in your system. So say you've got like a, a four gig GTX 970. That happens to be exactly what I have here. Go figure. You got a four gig GTX 970 and then you add in another four gig GTX 970. So now you've got like eight gigs of VRAM. No, <laughs> wrong. Actually, the way that multi-GPU workloads are handled, the VRAM is cloned across the card. So both of them have access to exactly the same assets at the same time. So even when you have 
four of these GPUs in the system at a time, although you can't really do that because they're 970s, they only run in three-way, but don't worry too much about that. Even if you had four of them, you would still have effectively the same amount of VRAM for gaming as if you were running a single card. And this also applies to dual GPU cards like the Titan Z or the R9 295X2, which have 12 gigs or eight gigs of RAM on them, but in actuality, that's six gigs and four gigs of usable VRAM per graphics card, respectively. Second, despite what you may have read online, you cannot SLI two different cards that have a different amount of VRAM on board. The word on the street is that they'll just use whichever one has less. They'll each have effectively that amount of VRAM, but mm -hmm. it doesn't work that way. AMD Crossfire, on the other hand, is a little bit more flexible and allows mixing and matching of GPUs and even video RAM amounts. But of course, the card with more memory, well, that extra RAM just gets kind of thrown out the window. Third, is that more video memory does not necessarily mean better performance mm -hmm. every time. If a game uses, let's say, 1400 megabytes of RAM, adding two more gigs won't make a difference because you won't be using it anyway. On the flip side, not having enough VRAM will degrade performance dramatically. You'll get texture popping, stuttering, and disproportionately low performance. An example of this is I was running Shadow of Mordor by accident on a 4K display with the built-in super sampling option, which means I was running effectively at 8 K. So I was running 200% super sampling. And instead of, you know, dropping in performance by a quarter, it dropped in performance from like 55 FPS to like two, because not having enough VRAM is disastrous. And the thing to bear in mind when you're shopping is that GPU vendors use some common sense when they're deciding how much memory to put on a graphics card. So a high-end GPU that can run your games at ultra settings in your high resolutions isn't gonna come with 512 mm -hmm. megs of RAM on it. More often than not, it'll have three gigs or four gigs because the GPU actually has enough horsepower to be able to render the image that would require that much VRAM to store it. The chances are though, if you're buying a low end GPU, sort of the opposite is true. There is no point putting three or four gigs mm -hmm. on it because by the time you're gonna try to render that image, it's not gonna have enough power to do it anyway. So how much VRAM do you need? Well, basically, um, the long and short of it, I guess this is more long than short, is there is no clear cut answer. Games are constantly evolving. Graphics cards are constantly evolving. Some games are gonna need more, some will need less. I mean, we've seen games that are just highly optimized, or sometimes it's another word for not very demanding. Blizzard games, for example, we've seen ones that are not. So uh, games such as Watch Dogs. So we can't tell you guys exactly what amount will work best. The other thing is modding, like Skyrim can use anywhere from very, very little to tons if you throw third party mods at it with like extreme ultra definition textures and stuff like that. So basically, if you wanna get the most out of your budget, the best thing to do is talk to people, use assets like the NCIX forums or Linus Tech Tips forums where nice people can help you decide on the specific card for your use case scenario. Well, that's pretty much it for this episode of Tech Tips, guys. Thanks for watching. Comment below and let us know if there's other common myths or misconceptions that you want us to demystify, demythify, demisconceptionify. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.